Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and there is so much stuff out there today. I think I'm going to have to break cut this video off at some point because there's like, I mean, Chris Larson stirred up a hornet's nest yesterday, but but it's a good thing because what he did is he made a, a lot of these guys who have been what I call fence riders, especially congress people. He made he got them to show their face yesterday. So now we know, okay? But uh, there's others too. We'll we'll show you the whole. I, we we have called this so well. It's not even funny about what's really going on. All these people, they've never been pro crypto industry. They've been pro Bitcoin and Ethereum, and we were right. Everything has been a concerted effort to create a monopoly for those two. And we are the we are the only ones that have been out here fighting to bust up what they're trying to create, and we won't quit until we have a level playing field. And if we hadn't done what we've been doing and caused this stir, then none of this would have been stopped. None of it would have even been exposed. The light would not have been on it. And so be proud of yourselves because the bad guys are on the run, and they're on the run from truth. <laughs> Trust you me on that. Um, Nick Mirafato from Link2, let's start off here because Link2 yesterday had a record-breaking record growth yesterday. Um, they had, uh, it says, uh, new users today, 1,057 record-breaking new users yesterday is what I'm assuming that means. And Nick Mirafato says, Link2 is one of our available investments. We too will soon be a unicorn. Now that is a bold statement. Unicorn means you're worth over a billion dollars. And guess what? The digital asset investor owns Link2 shares. That is uh, probably, I guess it might be my largest holding of private equity of Link2 because I see what these guys are doing. And um, by the way, the reason they had the record breaking is because everybody thinks like, kind of like the way I think about this, is that ripple equity, there's gonna be a day when, when they say, oh, that was the last we had and, and then there's no more getting it. Uh, I think they have a little bit, they, I mean, they sold a ton of it yesterday, it looked like. I think they have a little bit of it on the platform. That's um, linqto.com. I'll put the link up at the top of this description, by the way. Now, I saw this tweet. Now, I don't know if this is just someone wishful thinking, maybe. But it's still, I wanted to start with on a positive note with this video. Settlement end of April? I'll take it. So, anyway. Um, also, I wanted to show you some other things that seem pretty positive. Yesterday, we've had the last 48 hours, there's been some good XRP price movement. This tweet caught my eye. XRP community, pack your bags. The clock is ticking. Um, XRP, USD, 1D, same footprint. Let's see what this looks like. So this kind of looks like what they're saying is we crack a dollar is, what I, is the gist of what I get out of that. Now, let's look at this. Dark Defender. Uh, has weighed in. Hi there all. Yesterday we hit uh, point, uh, we hit 91 cents, which was close to our target of 91.917. We had a resistance there. Above this area, XRP has a mid resistance of $1.06 and will target uh, $1.26. Support is 78 cents. Patience is the something. Enjoy your day. So here's what they're looking at. So it, it looks like some of these guys are thinking we may crack a dollar or there's a good chance. Now, Dark Defender, for the first time I've ever seen him, he highlighted something that, um, what I keep talking about, about gold. Let's update. Gold closed the cup and handle pattern and waiting to jump off. We can now expect a correction a couple of weeks. Above $2,140 will be extremely bullish towards $2,813. We saw two all-time highs in the month of August. So 822 will be interesting. And he says gold targets. 2140, 2813, 3331. I believe gold is probably one of the most promising investments that there is, which is why I'm accumulating it right now myself. Almost every single week, 
week I am adding gold to my Glint account and the reason is because that is spendable gold and they have they gave me a um, debit card which is a debit debit master card um, and I can put my gold in there and so if our dollars lose their purchasing power with all this inflation like they are every day I can use that I can use my gold if I need to to buy food groceries whatever I need to do this is the one of the most awesome things I've ever seen and that's why they became a sponsor of mine that's why the link will be in the top of the description of this video go check it out okay now here comes the drama folks here we go all right so Nick Carter who's one of the Bitcoin um, maxis uh, Chris Larson was getting just pounded yesterday from all angles but don't worry Chris there's some of us that are gonna pound back Nick uh, Carter, we're dealing with some extremely mundane. Now, now think about this for a, for a minute, folks. All these people that are going after Chris Larson and Ripple right now, these are the same people. They're, they're accusing Chris Larson of being this scumbag and dishonest and all this. These are the same people who have, from Wall Street down to the, from, from the crypto, supposed crypto industry groups to the crypto talking heads, to the SEC working on a free pass for Bitcoin and Ethereum, to um, all of the crypto media, the traditional media on CNBC, from to all of the talking heads of the companies, whether it's, um, I won't name names, but anyway, these people from Wall Street top to bottom have been forcing this Bitcoin Ethereum narrative and, and in a coordinated fashion working on all of this for years now. And now they're going to point the finger at Chris Larson and Ripple and act like they're the nefarious actors. It's rich. Trust me. So this guy says, we're dealing with some extremely mendacious, nasty people. Fortunately for us, they're also very stupid. Well, I think you could accuse the people at Ripple of a lot of things. That's not really one. Um, Chris' deep thoughts on the topic of Bitcoin mining are equivalent to a, a nematode, whatever that is, contemplating li linear algebra. Man, you're so smart, Nick. Fun fact about Chris Larson, not only does he lobby against Bitcoin on energy grounds, he also tries to discourage renewable energy asset owners from mining Bitcoin. I've witnessed this firsthand, so his concern is totally contrived. He doesn't want Bitcoin to be made sustainable. Nick seems, this is Chris Larson, Nick seems like you have a lot of issues with what I'm advocating here for Bitcoin to continue to succeed and become carbon neutral. We've been in meetings together in the past and when I spoke up, you didn't really have much to say then. Happy to have a civil conversation with you about this subject. I'm sure there are at least a few things we agree on. Even if there's a lot we disagree on, regardless, please leave Ripple out of this. They are not involved. All right. Then we had this, Bit, uh, Bit, BitBoy had done a, an entire thread on, on um, Ethereum, the, uh, the ETH gate and all this. But, and, and on a lot of it, he was correct on. But this part he's not correct on. This is the part I'm interested in. Um, he says, I know people who invest, he's basically saying that the conflicts of interest with the SEC, that's all legit. But the, the um, disguised whales part, the ICO, that's just conspiracy theory, according to him. He says, I know people who invested in the ICO, a lot of people, <clears throat> like IRL, whoever that is. So, so the question is, I know people who bought in. Where was the cover-up? The sale was very public. So at a minimum, the public had a fair shot to buy the ETH ICO and participate in governance network, etc. Now, I don't think BitBoy is dumb at all. I think BitBoy is a smart guy. Which is why when I read this, I know that he's he's intentionally dancing around what he knows is the truth, because this is not true. What's true? The part that is true is yeah, the sale was public, and he yeah, I'm sure he does know a lot of people that bought at the sale. But what he does not, well, I don't know if he knows or not. But what the public has never known is who, they disguise them with with multiple email addresses. Okay. Nobody knows who those buyers were. He may know individual. Yeah, he may know. He may have a friend who bought Ethereum in that pre-sale. But the people that were behind the sale have never let everybody know who those buyers were. And there's several people, companies that we know were around before the Ethereum 
ICO that from video we've shown it we know for example Charles Hoskinson said on video that senior Goldman Sachs developers were there okay we know because Joseph Lubin said so that JP Morgan was involved before the public mainnet launch those are his words we also know from video um, there was a video from one of the guys at Andrews and Horwitz who bragged about how he and all his buddies at Andrews and Horwitz were at the, the Bitcoin Miami when they announced the, the sale. Okay, so we know Andrews and Horwitz was there. Um, I'm not saying that any three of those companies bought in the ICO. What I'm saying is nobody knows. And that's the part, that's where the controversy is here. And so I tweeted his thing out. I said, Fantasyland, the sale was public. The buyers have been hidden to, to this day. He should be calling for an audit to prove this was just a con this is just a conspiracy. It's easy to prove we're wrong. Do it. Call for an audit. And then uh, Ripple, I says, I want BitBoy to hear. I think he has heard this. See, this is I, I can't prove that, but how could you not have heard this by now? This is I mean, this guy's plugged into social media. It's been in front of his face. If he wanted to see it, he may not have wanted to see it. But then TAIG comes in and says. Hey, XRP community, I mean, XRP conspiracy theorist community, nothing to see, just disguised Ethereum transactions that took place right around the time of the Ethereum pre-sale. And he's got all of the, <laughs> he's got all the stuff right here. I mean, look, you can run, but you can't hide, folks. It's all there, okay? Now, and these guys are all over it. Now, um, this was a classic. This is from yesterday. Um, this is somebody went, we were joking around about how somebody could go into, I said, I didn't even know how to do it, but somebody could go into Wikipedia and, and, um, change it so that the truth is reflected. <laughs> this person added, uh, on, this was Joseph Lubin's Wikipedia page. Um, Lubin is notorious for teaching whales how to disguise their purchases to help them remain anonymous and evade paying taxes. <laughs> the XRP community is urging the SEC to audit consensus Lubin and others in an effort to ensure a level playing field. And then, of course, it was de deleted by someone um, shortly thereafter. Then here's another Chris Larson. This guy was on Coindesk. Coindesk was like just as fast as they could trying to put out the fire of Chris Larson and and all that and try they were they were trying to make sure that as they started all of their uh putting their stuff out to make sure their narrative was intact that it looked like it was just them kind of being fair and, and whatnot okay so this is one of the guys they put on uh we've heard these claims for many many years from a lot of different groups on the environmental sides of bitcoin mining and what bitcoin mining's impact on the environment is but uh, you know a lot of this is really really shady science uh there is not a whole lot of data that supports this and it really ignores a lot of examples like bit farms you know who are very publicly and very transparently mining bitcoin on huge amounts of hydro and renewable resources in places like canada uh, the united states and paraguay so since our inception in 2017 we've mined uh, somewhere around 15,000 bitcoins with hydroelectricity and these sorts of claims are completely ignored um, i don't think that this is going to go anywhere it seems like another uh, play by Ripple to promote their own token um, at the expense of Bitcoin using shoddy science. Uh, we've heard the... Wow, these people. So Chris Larson says, this made me laugh out loud. One, Ripple has nothing, nothing to do with this campaign. Two, I've said time and time again that my end goal for this campaign is for Bitcoin to succeed and find ways Bitcoin can contribute to the fight against climate change. And then there is this um, from Coindesk. Correction, XRP predated, you think Coindesk didn't already know this? Correction, XRP predated Ripple's formation, though they were found, founded by the same people. As now prominently noted in this explainer for the crypto curious, SEC claims the coin is an unregistered security the firm sold in violation of federal law. And then th they're retweeting the, what they originally put out, which was Ripple's a San Francisco based tech company that developed the decentralized XRP cryptocurrency. You tell me they didn't know that before they wrote that. That is just a bold faced lie. All right, moving along. Now, today, Pomp, Anthony Pompliano, who is a Bitcoin maxi, he's going to be interviewing Chris Larson. 
Every, he says, everything is fair game. We'll discuss what we agree and disagree about. What questions do you have for him? Now, Warren Davidson weighs in. Warren Davidson, the same, the same guy who has been unwilling to, to aggressively call for any kind of investigation of conflicts of interest in SEC versus Ripple, been unwilling to call for anything. These are all, this is all factual. We've got timelines. We've got video. We've got more proof than anything. The second that anybody even begins to whisper anything bad about Bitcoin, he's all over it in defense of Bitcoin. So Warren David is now completely out. He's out and proud now as a Bitcoin Ethereum maxi. He can, he can prove me wrong about where he's coming from any day, but I don't think he's going to do it because I think that he's just exposed himself. And the unfortunate thing is that I agree with 99% of what Warren Davidson stands for, but Warren Davidson has no business. Actually, I don't need to say it because uh, Mr. B said it right here. Why does a, he retweeted, I didn't even read this, but Warren Davidson replied to this. He says, the market clearly gives Bitcoin a premium valuation. Why does 12921 proposal seek to effectively buy 51% of existing hash rate by collectively bribing the miners? What's wrong with simply competing via XRP, uh, da, da, da. Anyway, so he writes that, and then Mr. B says, why does a sitting U.S. congressman pick winners and losers? Shouldn't you be out there creating a level playing field? And I think uh, Jesse Ventura might um, be nailing it right there. We got a pro Houston, let, let me say this. Houston, we've got a problem because now we've discovered that some of these Congress people, they're on the same team of the, as the people trying to pick winners and losers. Now this is disturbing. And, and, and this is not going to age well for these Congress people because this is not the function that these Congress people should be serving. Uh, any of you people from Ohio that supported Warren Davidson, you ought to be watching. If, if you're an XRP holder from Ohio, you ought to be watching this, watching this very closely because this guy, you know, like I said, I agree with a lot of what he says politically, but the problem is he's now exposed himself as having other interests besides serving the public. Joseph Grunfest knew if Ether is to be allowed to trade freely in the market, so too must XRP. And if XRP is to be subject to restrictions, so too should Ether. Any other result creates a competitive imbalance that cannot be rationalized with reference to fair enforcement of the federal securities laws. That's Joseph Grunfest to Jay Clayton on December 17th of 2022. This is the kind of thing that the Warren Davidsons of the world should be talking about, is how it's not right what's being done to one company. Now, um, I'm not going to go here. I'm going to end this video here. And then we'll pick back up. I got so much stuff. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family to uh, check out the read this. If you've never read this, this guy's one of the most, Joseph Grunfest is one of the most respected people uh, that has ever been at the SEC. And the fact that all these Congress people are not holding this up as what their mantle should be and are instead holding up Bitcoin and Ethereum and anything that threatens those um, they go after, that tells you part of what's wrong with this country. I mean, this is sick what's going on. Thanks for